in this video i'll be talking about congresses congress is a symbol which is denoted by this and it was introduced by carl fredrich gauss and let's say now what is the formal definition of the congresses when we say that the two integers are congruent to each other in fact the study of the congresses is also known as the study of arithmetic of remainders and it gives another approach to study the divisibility problems now let's see what is the formal definition of the congruence let n be a fixed positive integer two integers a and b are said to be congruent modulo n and we denoted by this expression a is congruent to b modulo n if n divides a minus b or we can say that a minus b is k times n for some k belonging to integers so let's take some example and let me to fix this integer n is equal to 7 and to understand this idea let me to take any two integer as 3 equal congruent to 24 modulo 7 now let's verify whether the statement is true or not we say 3 is congruent to 24 modulo 7 so this should hold if 7 divides 3 minus 24 so that means or i can say 7 divides minus 21 which is true take another example suppose now i take minus 31 is congruent to 11 modulo 7 in this case now this is a and this is b so we want 7 should divide a minus b or i may say 7 should divide minus 31 minus 11 or 7 divides minus 42 so this is also true because we say that 7 because we know that 7 divides 42 so this means minus 31 is congruent to 11 modulo 7 in another example i can take minus 15 is congruent to minus 64 modulo 7 Now in this case, what should hold? Seven must divide minus fifteen plus sixty-four. So taking this b on the other side, and that is why it is here with the plus sign. So this means seven divides forty-nine, and that is also true. So this way we can say that a is congruent to b modulo n. This has a meaning. If n divides a minus b, so now consider some example in which this congruence uh, definition is not satisfied. So suppose I take six is congruent to one modulo three. Now you can see that this is not true because three does not divide six minus one. This is not true, so that means this congruence does not hold. And similarly, let us take some more example. I'll take twelve is congruent to two modulo seven. This is also not true because seven does not divide ten. That is twelve minus two. So this way, the definition of the congruence is actually the another way of writing the definition of the divisibility let's write some of the obvious remark and we can say that any two integers are congruent modulo 1 because 1 will divide every integer so we can say that any two integers are congruent modulo 1 so that means my expression which is a is congruent to b modulo 1 is always true so this will always hold because 1 divides a minus b always so that is always true and second remark says that two integers are congruent modulo 2 if they both are even or they both are odd so now as we know that one always divide a minus b so this was a very trivial case and to understand now in general the congruence is let us fix an integer which is strictly greater than 1 and this will give us a non trivial case and now i am also using the division algorithm so here i mention now by division algorithm now and we also consider a integer a so consider an integer a and upon division this a by n so we apply division algorithm this will give me an expression a is equal to q n plus r so this means there exist some quotient and remainder which satisfy this relation and the remainder lies between zeros less than or equal to r strictly less than n now looking at this general expression constructed by division algorithm and that is true for every integer we can write a corresponding congruence so this means a minus r is equal to q n and that means this will now act as a minus b is equal to multiple of something so i can always write a is congruent to r modulo n and here we know this will act as the remainder so this is what is our remainder and if we go back to the previous definition of the congruence we have written a is congruent to b modulo n whenever n divides a minus b or i can say that a minus b is a multiple of n because if n divides this then means a minus b is a multiple so from this definition and looking at this expression i can now write this as a is congruent to r modulo n and this r is a remainder here and now if you want to see what is the possible values of r so for example let's take it first in the example suppose if n is equal to 2 
and you take any integer a which is equal to r modulo 2 so we know whenever we divide any integer a by this 2 so the possibility for the remainder is either 0 or 1 either it is an even number or it is an odd number so this means for any a whenever we divide it by 2 the possibility for the remainder is 0 and 1 so this means for r the possible values are either 0 or 1 and similarly for n is equal to 3 if if you want to see now what is the possibility for a either it is 0 or it can be 1 or the remainder it can be 2 modulo 3 so this means for the possible values of r whenever this n is considered as 3 this is 0 1 and 2 so that means now from the star equation you can have a general understanding that the possibility for r is either the remainder is 0 or it is 1 2 up till n minus 1 now this is justifiable from the previous expression also because you can see that from here in the division algorithm also r can take the values which lie between 0 and strictly less than n that means the and last value which is taken by the r is n minus 1 which is an integral value and that is same in this expression which is the congruence expression here this remainder is again taking the value 0 1 2 up till n minus 1 and this is why we also call theory of congruences as the arithmetic of remainders